So we're here live on the Delivering Happiness bus with Tim O'Reilly from O'Reilly Media. We're actually rolling on the bus around South by Southwest, and we're going to talk to him a little bit about what, he, what inspires him and what he's all about. So we're here with Tim. All right. So uh, my company started out actually as a tech writing consulting company, became a computer book publisher, then became a conference producer. Uh, and what I realized somewhere along the way, looking back over my career, was what I was really doing was finding innovative edge communities that had a lot of spoken word knowledge you know, or sh shared knowledge that needed to be communicated to a wide, wider audience. Uh, you know, so for example, when we first started publishing about the World Wide Web, there were only 200 websites. And we said, this is super cool, we got to get the word out. Uh, open source software, I, I pulled together the, what came to be called the Open Source Summit after I realized that all my best selling books were about products that had no companies behind them and were getting no coverage in the traditional tech media. And, and not only that, I realized that a lot of the guys who were the heads of these projects didn't actually know each other. And so I brought them together to, 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 to um, talk and I, I, I later formalized that as a philosophy you know that our goal as a company is to change the world by spreading the knowledge of innovators uh, I'm also really fascinated by the sensor revolution we've been chronicling this in our magazine make magazine and with maker fair and now there's all these businesses starting to crop up you know stuff that just seemed like hey there here are these weird people uh, you know uh, playing and now of course you look at, at uh, smartphones their sensor platforms the Microsoft Connect uh, you know all this stuff that seemed weird. You know, when we published our book on OpenCV, the Open Computer Vision package about four or five years ago, it was like people were blown, you know, all the industry was blown away. How is this book a bestseller? But we could see that people were playing with computer vision and, and it's how important it is. And, you know, of course, now we see this Google self-driving car. Uh, we see all these robotics applications. Uh, you see the Connect, uh, and they're going, oh, okay, I get it. There's this interesting progression from people hacking on things for fun uh, and into business. And often a lot of where the, the sort of startup frenzy is, is actually behind the curve uh, rather than ahead of the curve. The enthusiasts are the ones who are ahead of the curve. I think there's a revolution brewing in, in healthcare. There's a whole lot of, uh, I think, really thoughtful design in some of the healthcare legislation for accountable care where you can imagine Medicare becoming more like Google, where the, uh, you know, we'll, we'll start to have data feedback on what works and what doesn't, and you know, where we, we're, you know, we're gonna start uh, changing the reimbursement systems in Medicare so that we pay more for the things that work and less for the things that don't. And, and this could lead to you know, real revolution, because there, of course, is a big problem that uh, you know, we have a society, we're spending too much money on health care, uh, there's too many parasites in the system, and we have not had uh, mechanisms for combating that. And we're starting to see a way forward where we could apply technology to change that system. Uh, you know, I think the great companies really uh, do think about uh, society. And, and, and even companies that now we might look down at, you know, like we look at the auto industry and they're, they're kind of the bad guys, and yet you look at uh, what Henry Ford did, you know, it's like uh, in, in the way he thought systemically about, oh, wait, the workers have to make uh, better wages so they can afford the product. They're also going to be the consumers of our product. He invented the, 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 the you know, the 40-hour work week, the weekend, so people would have time to go on auto excursions, all these kinds of things that were just brilliant systemic thinking. Uh, we have a, an awful lot of people who are uh, doing very, very narrow uh, optimization, uh, which leads to systemic degradation. You know, the financial market's a great example of that. And one of my watchwords that I try to urge on entrepreneurs is to create more value than you capture and to make sure that, that uh, companies are thinking about how much value they're letting escape as well as to, to other people, as well as how much they're getting for themselves. I, I think a lot these days about uh, the big bubble that we're all in. You know, people look at the, the, maybe we're in a tech bubble again or whatever, but it's really important to realize how much our entire society is in a bubble. Um, you know, we've been living on cheap fossil fuel for, uh, you know, a couple of, you know, past century at least. It's led to some amazing results. You know, it's really easy to imagine that, you know, things are just going to get better and better and it'll be super cool and, uh, you know, won't the future be wonderful? Uh, but there are definitely some dark futures ahead of us. And uh, again, a good reason to work on stuff that matters. 
because uh, we may not have the luxury of working on trivia. And uh, I'd love just to have people take seriously uh, that we need to make a better world.